For a brief moment, it seemed like Sony wanted to get in on the Lionsgate Vestron video thing of releasing their back catalog of genre titles onto Blu-ray. Great, that's awesome, I'm all for it. However, Sony's desire to do so seems to have started and ended with their release of 1988's 976 Evil. This was initially a Season 1 review and the fourth ever video produced for this series. Season 1 of this show is trash, and that review in particular doesn't tell you a damn thing really about 976 Evil or what I thought of it. So this video will replace that. Farewell, garbage video. The opening credits of a man being stalked by phones until one eventually makes him catch on fire means nothing in the grand scheme of things. God, I suppose, makes it rain fish a few minutes after that. This means nothing in the grand scheme of things, except maybe it's what gets a reporter or a private investigator to show up and become a character in the movie. His exact background is never clear because he identifies himself as several different people throughout the course of the film. Ostensibly, the movie is supposed to be about Hoax, played by Stephen Jeffries from Fright Night and Fraternity Vacation, who successfully creeps me out whenever I see him in any movie, and 976 Evil is no exception. Hoax is getting bullied so much from all sides that the devil's hotline he keeps calling for his horror scope finally takes him over and he becomes a full shitheel. Others in the film have also been calling this hotline, but they didn't turn into monsters like Hoax does. So I guess if you're calling the horror scope line, you're automatically entered into a contract with Satan. And if you don't go along with whatever vague horror scope he gives you, he tries to murder you. But if you do, he turns you into a monster. The devil is just wacky like that, I guess. This sounds like I'm grasping at straws to try and explain what 976 Evil is about, but honestly there's not much that happens in it, especially for nearly half its running time. I remember being about 40 minutes in and just wondering out loud what the plot was or who the main character was even supposed to be. These are bad things to wonder about at the halfway point of a 90 minute horror flick. Around an hour in, Robert Picardo shows up and I figured things were about to get interesting, mainly because he plays Mark Dark who seems to be a wacky, sleazy 976 number business owner. But then the final scene of the movie basically hints that he was the devil all along. So the devil has time to just hang out and run a few 976 hotlines in freaking Garden City, USA or wherever the hell this is? The big finale of this movie takes place in Hoax's house where things are all snowy and ice cold, which seems to be the opposite of what the devil is known for. Call me crazy, but what? Unlike the Vestron series, Sony's release of 976 Evil does not feature a ton of extra features. In fact, it only has two. First is the alternate home video version. There is zero context given for what this is, so I'll do my best to sort it out. It's a VHS transfer that runs 10 to 15 minutes longer than the theatrical cut. It's more moody, I guess? There are more shots of things? But it doesn't change the story much, and there's no added sex or gore that I can see. It adds a scene where the mom calls the religious reporter, which explains why the reporter shows up. And it adds a scene introducing the school principal lady much earlier. Reporter dude hangs out and interviews the mom about the fish for a lot longer. Actually, they dwell on the fish thing for a while, 30 minutes in, and they're still talking about it. Unfortunately, with all this extra fish talking, it's almost an hour before anything of note happens. Also, this version helps explain that the reporter was using a fake private investigator's ID in order to talk to the principal later in the film, so that clears that up. He's actually a religious reporter for a tabloid magazine. The second and final extra on the disc is a commentary track with director Robert England. Yep, that Robert England. And his wife Nancy, which, yes, it's amusing that Freddie married a woman named Nancy. She's not just along for the ride here, though. She was the film's set designer, and this is where they met. England calls this film an anti-bullying movie. Okay, sure, that's not inaccurate. He's almost performing during the track instead of just talking from the heart, and a lot of it is just commenting on the scenes as they happen. There's not a lot of insight. Although he reveals something I didn't know, which is that one of the punks in the film who looks like Billy Drago is in fact Billy Drago's kid. I was hoping for some real insight into the post-production process and the alternate version and all that, but instead it's more like someone talking about a movie they really like and not a movie they really made. Still, if you're a fan, hearing him coach the movie along in a spooky voice might be exactly what you'd enjoy. But if you want a much better version of 976 Evil, watch 1981's Evil Speak. It's almost this exact movie, except that it makes sense and has a wicked cool ending. This, this is just, well, I don't know what the hell this is. I mean, I've seen it four times now, and I still can't explain it. I guess nobody's interested in the underworld anymore, you know, just Ewoks and E.T. and football and phone six. I hate that heavy breathing crap. 